it's really cold today. Let me just put together my leshy and get started. And I'm gonna need gloves too, yeah. Well, I'm sure that you all see something new about my Leshy 225 caliber. Let me briefly take you back to the workshop and let you know what is new about it. So this is going to be a quick upgrade of my Leshy 2 and a super easy peasy one. I decided to get one of those large volume tanks to increase the shot count of my rifle and I chose what seems to be the latest addition in the Wolfic lineup the 470 cubic centimeter carbon fiber bottle. Why I chose this one and why I consider it to be the best one? Simply because it is the largest bottle that requires nothing more than a 16 millimeter pin lock for securing your leshy to unfolded position. And I also got a wicker manometer black dial series to get an accurate reading of my reg working pressure. Of course I'll have to change the position of my magazine holders to be able to install it and I'll also have to remove my neoprene cover. You can do this from either side, but I personally prefer to remove it by unscrewing the forward assembly. First I'll need to degas the gun, no two ways about it, and that's done via this degassing port right here. It is also very important to put the fill probe in the fill port so that it doesn't rotate while you're unscrewing the air tube of the gun, thus becoming inaccessible. Now let's remove this brace here, I definitely won't be needing it for the carbon fiber tank. As you can see the magazine holders are already gone, the fill probe is in place, so it's time to unscrew the air tube itself. Now I'm glad that this coupling here remained on the M18 thread because sometimes they do. You definitely won't be able to unscrew it by hand, not a big deal though, there are those two cutouts to use a wrench on. I personally am a bit on the pedantic side, so I prefer to put some electric tape on my adjustable wrench so that I don't damage the anodizing on the coupling. Both the brace and the coupling go back on the air tube and I'll put this entire assembly away for when I decide to revert my L2 back to its initial state. Moving on, I carefully remove the forward plug so that I can take out the cover and make room for the pressure gauge without putting any holes in the neoprene. I see most guys put some power cord there instead and perhaps so will I at some point. Some silicone grease on the o-ring for good measure before replacing it and I personally prefer to wipe off the excess. Then we check if it's still properly aligned. Some silicone grease on the M18 thread o-ring before installing the bottle. A brief inspection just to make sure the inside is clean. And then we go on and ever so carefully screw the bottle on, making sure we don't cross thread anything. Not too tight guys, just hand tight. Next it's time to remove this plug and put the manometer in its place. There's this Delrin washer inside, which you can take out and make sure it's clean before installing the pressure gauge. Not too loose, but also not too tight either, because you don't want to damage the washer. Close the degassing port and you're ready to go. And I'm glad to say there is still room enough for my two magazine holders.
back at my permission boys and girls and I have to tell you I feel much more comfortable with this kind of setup because this large bottle is gonna give me the extra shot count this matters especially in those conditions 30 miles per hour wind and it's sub-zero temperatures you know it's basic physics you know how in this kind of temperature the pressure drops rapidly so without further ado let's get on with it And looks like we have more hungry cats to feed today. I know that they need a lot of food in this cold weather. Can you see the second one? That's 60 yards. Some hold on there. Oh, three down. Good. Same place. Another one. The cat snatched those first two pigeons almost straight away. I didn't even get the chance to get my camera and record the action. No, actually I was wrong. I did manage to find one of those pigeons, let me show you. There it is, I heard it hit the ground, maybe I heard the bang against this tin roofing here. And I saw a cat running in that direction, but... Apparently she didn't find it. There are a couple of pigeons in there and more are coming in. <laughs> Despite me being so close. Let me show you, let me zoom in. There is one. And yeah, I intend to get one of those. I think there are also some cats inside. Yeah, there, there's the one. And I think the cats will snatch the one that hits the floor immediately. Let's see. Sorry, there is no GoPro footage, guys. No use in this darkness. Now, these guys are just being stupid. He simply froze. That was nice. I mean, I don't know if you saw that. I don't know if I hit him twice, but he simply froze after the first shot. Yeah, I don't know, maybe here and here. Let's watch the slow motion together and in the meantime I'll try to go and locate the one that I just shot in sight. I'm surprised it's still here. And just look at this mess. I wasn't joking when I said 30 miles per hour. I see that more are coming in. And I can even hear crows. Let me just quickly... replace my magazine. Yeah. Oh yes. I'm glad that I found place for my magazine holders despite the larger carbon fiber bottle. Let's go! The crow played a really nasty trick on me. It started croaking and it chased away the pigeons and then it left itself. Yeah, which proves again that the pigeons are pretty silly birds, whereas COVID are highly intelligent. And yeah, as you can see, I'm trying to hide from the wind here. I'll be waiting for them. I'm even starting to consider probably placing some decoys and trying to attract the corvid just to get back at them. <laughs> and I also decided to take my gloves off. I'm telling you, it's very difficult to operate two cameras, a microphone and a gun with your gloves on. And I'm alone today, so... <laughs> no, waiting for them didn't do the trick. They went inside again. See, that is what I'm talking about. Let's try an offhand shot. Oh yeah, got him with the first one. There's another one. An offhand shot again. Yeah, guys, 
you got a love similar to air guns. And there I am, trading grain again. Hey there boys, 60 yards again. Got him. One more, same place. Okay. Surely you noticed that there was some pellet spiraling on my shots. I know I did as soon as I got home and checked the footage. Earlier that day, having installed the new items, I had some nice groups at 55 yards with the L2 and the 34 grain diabolos at 820 feet per second. But what I failed to factor in is the temperature difference. I ran the tests in an indoor shooting range where the temperature was 17-18 degrees Celsius, which is about 64 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I went out shooting in minus 2 degrees Celsius or 28 Fahrenheit, which felt like minus 7 Celsius with the wind chill or 19 Fahrenheit. When I got back home, I opened my ballistic calculator did the numbers and it turned out that while being outside I had been shooting at more than 20 feet per second less at the muzzle. Needless to say that number increases with the distance. I knew I could rely on my Leshy too and it did its job well, but it's been a while since I last shot in such low temperatures so I failed to take into account the considerable temperature difference. A mistake I'm not going to make again anytime soon. Guys, I'm about to call it a day. I'm almost frozen stiff and I can barely feel my fingers. And I'm sorry I didn't pull off this thing with the decoys. We're gonna do it in one of the following videos. It's getting even colder and it's also starting to snow. And I mean real snowflakes, not like the ones that are gonna trash talk me in the comments to this video. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my company and the company of the Leshy. I'll see you guys in the next one, pretty soon.